Yep. Here we go. Hi, everybody. How are you, Kim? I'm great, Rose. How are you doing today? Can't complain. Welcome to another episode of Casting Notes from Rose and Kim. That's Kim Swanson. She's in Los Angeles. She's a casting director. I'm Rose Rosen. I'm on the other coast, and I'm also a casting director. How are you? What are you? I'm great. It's so good to see you. You've been staying busy this week? I, I've been crazy busy. It's That's been a good thing. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Um, <laughs> but it's, busy. it's so busy. Yeah. So, and you, you've been crazy too. Oh, I've been crazy busy doing a lot of auditions and callbacks uh, this past week and uh, I've got more callbacks coming up tomorrow. So put that one to bed, hopefully, and yeah, move on to the next project, right? It's what we do. It just, it's, thank God it's ongoing and we're paying our bills. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> exactly. We're always exactly. a step away from that in, in, in this industry. Speaking of which, we have a great guest today who I bet okay. pays his bills and has for many years. <laughs> It's yep. Glenn Morshower. Yay. Yay. Come on out, Glenn. There he is. Glenn is an actor, director, producer, professional speaker. Really, he'll, he's your anything guy. And welcome to the show. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Kim. We actually have a title for uh, those of us that are, you know, uh, doing what I do. We are called That Guy. That guy. And, yeah. and it is an actual title. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. As a character oh, yeah. actor, uh, we are known as that guy. And it's interesting that uh, two years ago, um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel decided that that guy, that the that guy character actors were not acknowledged enough in his view. So during the Emmys, he wanted to give out the first that guy, the inaugural outing, that guy from that show award. Oh, and we right. got a letter. We got a letter. We truly did. The agency got a letter from the Jimmy Kimmel show saying that I was one of his favorite character actors. And so they flew me in to Los Angeles <laughs> to do the show with three other character actors. And um, and it was it was an incredible outing. So there's a there's a great living, as it turns out, to be made and a living that is just underneath the radar of having any kind of nonsense with media and people following you around and photographers. We don't have any of that. We live incredibly normal lives, but we work all the time and it is such a blessing. Yeah, journeyman actors. I mean, you know, just you, you keep at it, you keep working, you make a good living and yeah, more power to you. Tell me what you think about the word audition. Um, I despise the word. Tell me about that. I, I truly do. And this has been part of my coaching for many years uh, because the word connotes proving. It connotes earning one's good opinion of you. And I can, when I use it in a different context, you can really see how disempowering this word is. And my feelings are very strong about this, which is why I've coached actors to take it out of their lexicon. So if, if the two of you just play along with me, if the two of you were getting married this week, okay, just play along, no matter what your marital status is, pretend that you're getting married this week and you have not yet crossed paths with your in-laws to be, and they are flying in to your town uh, tomorrow because the rehearsal dinner is tomorrow night and the wedding is Saturday. Now you're going to see them tomorrow. So let me ask you, do you want to meet them or audition for them? Love that. Meet them, of course. Of course, yeah, but so only 100% of the time. Right. That question is only answered meet them 100% of the time when you compare the two. And, and frankly, I'm sure if if your spouse said, are you looking forward to auditioning for my parents? You would have an adverse reaction to that. It would be, I'm, I'm sorry, what? I would, yeah. I would say they're auditioning for me, but I'm a different bird. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. But, but the idea is, look, everyone has an important role. That's part of it. It is truly a collaborative effort. Everyone that's a part of the process. And so there's no proving that needs to be done 
and and you're just coming in the problem is that when you're thinking in terms of earning someone's good opinion of you you're entering the room from a subservient mindset mm. it's just the way it works is that you're thinking in terms of elevating to their position so that you can experience a sense of enoughness at which point perhaps you'll be hired i think it is colossally flawed but instead and and here is here's the way the teaching goes i ask large I, i've been teaching this program called the extra mile it's a course in audition mastery i've been teaching it for 36 years all around the country but wait why don't you call it meat meat mastery well, no, I explain this in it because if they if they do, if they have to hear it to know what I'm talking about so that they can not do it. <laughs> no, it's true. So when okay. you say a course in audition mastery, that's what gets them in there. And then the first thing I tell them is toss that word out of your lexicon. So when when you are are going in to earn the good opinion of you, I ask this. Why do we go on? So here's the replacement word. The replacement word is meetings because that's what they are. The difference is meetings take place on a level playing field. Auditions do not. Yeah. Auditions are lopsided. So when you come in to meet someone, meeting is eye to eye. It's soul to soul. It's heart to heart. And it's a time of sharing, not proving. So I ask, why do we go on these meetings? The answer invariably is always the same. It never changes. The hands go up and they say, to get the job, right? But what I have found is that's probably one of the least effective approaches instead. And this is not woo-woo, foo-foo stuff. I, I, I can't tell you how strongly I feel about this. The objective is not to get the job. The objective is to realize that you are a masterful word and feeling steward, that that's what you are. Your job is to lift the words off of the page where once upon a time they only existed as fantasy and you are the device or the bridge, if you will, by which those words are transported over the fence into reality, which is downloadable into the hearts and minds of people. Here's a key word here, world wide. And when you really grasp that we're talking about worldwide, you're not just talking about your backyard porch and you're going to invite a couple of neighbors over to watch you do a play. What you do well in that room, if you are selected, gets seen by the world. Now, let's rewind. The piece itself, the script, was written by someone. So to them, it's their baby. So here is my question to actors. Would you, how many of you are parents, right? I ask for a second, how many of you are parents? Okay, so if you're a parent, how many of you would drive through downtown Los Angeles, roll down your window and hand your child to the first person you drive by and say, I'll be back in about eight hours. Could you take care of my kid? <laughs> okay, and of course, no hands go up. So you've got to understand that that script is their baby and they don't want to leave their baby in just anybody's hands. They want to make sure that you are a qualified steward to take care of their baby. So now, now maybe you figured out how the process works. They are looking for someone to take care of their child and to take care of it masterfully. No and question. Deeply, no question. And deeply and professionally and in a compelling way. So your job is to demonstrate that this is what I do. Right. This is what I do. I turn these feelings into reality and you're about to see that. You don't say that to anyone, but that's your mindset is you're about to see that happen. And what I teach my actors is this, watch this. It's the watch this mindset. And again, you will never say that to anyone in casting, but I said for years, I've been walking in and looking at everyone in the room, just sweeping the room. And my thought is, watch this. Right, right. 
No, that's that's genius. That, that's that really rings true, rings very true. So tell me also about non-pursuit. This is something you mentioned before and, and you didn't tell me more. So tell uh, us. Well, all you're going to love this as much as you love the audition story. Um, you know, we hear people saying all the time, you know, I, I asked for a show of hands. How many of you, this was at an event I did a couple of years ago. I had 250 people in this space for this course on audition mastery. And I said, um, I had opened with the audition uh, education. And then I said, how many of you, whether you were born here in LA or moved here, doesn't matter, but how many of you are here right now? And these are all actors, by the way. These are not directors or producers. It's a hundred percent actors. How many of you are here in Los Angeles to pursue your acting career? If so, please indicate by raising your hand. 100% of the audience raised their hands. It's not surprising. It's the standard response. And I say, now, I'm going to make sure you give that you receive my top two takeaways to start the evening out. And we've got a lot more coming, but these are my top two. The first one being the one I just mentioned about auditioning. The other is that I will promise you when I packed my bags and left Dallas, which is where I am right now, when I left Dallas to come to LA, I'm convinced that the reason that everything has gone so beautifully Truly, everything I ever wanted from this business has already occurred. I'm, I'm in gravy time now. How did that happen? A combination of things, to be sure. But primarily, I attribute it to this. When I was 18, I did not come to L.A. to pursue a career. I moved there to have one. They're not the same. I did not move there to pursue. It's interesting that we don't go to the mountains to pursue skiing, we don't go to a pool to pursue swimming. And yet the wording changes when we're talking about the acting industry. So we go to the mountains to ski, we go to a pool to swim, but we go to Hollywood to pursue. Why the word change? And I started analyzing this as a teenager and here's what I came up with. The word pursue is something we use when a fairly substantial part of our beingness does not expect to catch something. How many of you have ever picked up the phone and said, and called someone and asked them if they'd like to pursue dinner? <laughs> we laugh. We laugh because we damn sure don't do that. No one has ever in the history of the planet called someone and said, would you like to pursue dinner? What do they say? They say, would you like to have dinner? So somewhere there is in consciousness, there is some sort of disparity between those two words. There's a differentiation of when do we use have versus pursue. And I thought it comes down to, and Kim, you've heard me talk about this in some of these rooms. It comes down to an expression I use called EH, which stands for estimated haveability. In other words, everything we look at we look at and we see it as how haveable is that? So most actors see acting as an extreme long shot with regard to its estimated haveability. So they change the wording surrounding it. Well, what if, play along with me, what if? What if you didn't? What if you didn't change the wording? What if you didn't see it as something on a different shelf of consciousness? And I mean, for real not a game. What if you really saw a career as being something what, that was just as haveable as dinner or skiing or swimming? Right. You have to talk to yourself because you have to talk properly to yourself because you're listening <laughs> Yes. and you might hear something. Yes. You know, you, you, Program your brain with garbage, garbage in, garbage out. Garbage right? in, garbage out. Program your brain that this is going to happen and and it and it and it's more likely to happen. You know? Well, what it does is it shows up as a call to action, Kim. So if that is your mindset, so once that becomes your mindset, someone could say, well, that's just work. No, it's not. Because if that's your mindset, it informs you to behave differently. If you've decided this is what is in my life, this is what is, then there will be a corresponding behavioral shift in response to that mindset. Right. 
I mean, I know you get this because this is the language you speak, and I'm just really now learning more about Rose, but it's there is tremendous truth to this. And it's interesting that those who sit there with their arms crossed and greet it with, oh, that's a bunch of hubbub, here's the deal. Their opinion about it being nonsense is the reason that for them, it is nonsense. Right, right. Okay. So if they're shutting it out with disbelief and saying, well, you, you can't train your mind to do that, then what was it, Henry Ford, who said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. that's and, and that's what that teaches that's us. So, I find too, like, I think actors or anyone in, in the entertainment industry, like, it's so easy to forget. But this is no different when you think of the people that you think are most successful in your area of entertainment you want to be in, whether it's an actor or a director or whatever your dream and goal are, right? It's the people you are aspiring to emulate in some way are kind of like the, you know, U.S. Olympic team of, of that genre, right? Yeah. So, you know, what Olympian ever showed up at the starting gate for their race and said, hmm, I think today... I'll try and be good. No, they have been telling their brain, they've been picturing the win, they've been training for it, they've been focused on it, and in their mind, there's no other outcome but the win. And therefore, they win. Yes. And this is no different. If, when we train our minds and we focus on the outcome of the win, we will get the win. But if you can't even see the win, how are you going to grab it? You can't grab something you don't know. Yes, and the win is always, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I more specifically want to add that we can also stand to upgrade our, our understanding of what, what does it mean to win? Mm -hmm. So for example, example, to me, a win is what takes place in the macro. So a micro win could be, well, I booked the role today. Mm -hmm. No, a micro, that's a micro win. The macro win was that it was enormously successful and whether I booked the role is irrelevant. Right, right. It was an incredible outing. Right. We all connected. The truth was told. I also, I've been at this long enough. I've been making movies for 46 years. I understand there are a number of reasons why people do and do not get the role. And sometimes it has nothing to do with their ability at all. In fact, I've seen rooms where the best actor that came in, the best one is not the choice because it's a painting and it doesn't blend well with what has already been attached to the canvas. Absolutely. That yeah. happens all the time, of literally course. every movie. Okay. I tell actors all the time, we, we're putting together a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. yeah. And you might have a really beautiful piece that I love, but if it doesn't fit that puzzle, I can't force it into the puzzle. Right. right. It's, it's the same thing. But you have certainly made a mental note of, oh my gosh, I would love to put this person in as many puzzles oh. as I can because yeah. I adore their yeah. energy. Exactly. Yeah. Their yeah. It's never, it's never a waste to have an audition. It's always, it's part of the job. You just need to keep doing it and you will get work. We could, I could do this for hours. I know Kim can too. Oh. <laughs> and I hope you'll come back and see us again, Glenn. This was a total delight. Rose, will you let me give you one more takeaway? Yeah. I want to give you one more because yeah. uh, Kim's heard me talk about it. it. This one was something that was whispered to me probably 25 years ago from thin air. And I wrote it down, thank God, when I heard it. And it's about mindset. And, um, and it has been true every day that I've been teaching it since, which is that there are four distinctly different mindset rooms, if you will, prototypes. And room one is impossibility. The theme word of that mindset is no. Well, you know, I was wondering if no. Well, you know, we could always no. Well, you know, it seemed like we could no. <laughs> so room one. Room two, we move up to possibility on the next rung of the ladder of consciousness, if you will. Possibility, their theme word is different. Now we've moved from no to maybe. Maybe. So I'm open-minded. It's neither yes nor no. It's neither pro nor con. They're neither leaning forward nor backward, but maybe I'm listening. Tell me more. That's room two. Room three, we move up another rung to probability. They see things as likely. That is their theme word. This will likely go well today. This movie will likely be a hit. 
So these are your optimists in life. And then the final category, and I knew it wouldn't take any time to get through this, is inevitability. And their theme word is the polar opposite of impossibility, yes. theme word no. Inevitability is the theme word of yes. That mindset is known as pronoia, P-R-O-N-O-I-A. Very few people know the word. It is the opposite of paranoia. Paranoia says it is the belief that life conspires against us. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be paranoid. To be of the pronoia mindset means that you hold the intrinsic belief that life aligns with you and that you believe all things conspire ultimately for your good, which allows you to kick back, relax, and trust, and not flip out all the time over the day-to-day -day minutia because it's relatively meaningless in the grand scheme of things. Well, I always love actors who say yes. <laughs> yes. This is this is my favorite thing. So you definitely hit on things that 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 sing to us. But yes, it has been a delight. I've learned so much. Thank you. Thank you for bringing him to us, Kim. And I hope you guys subscribe and like and hit that notification bell. <laughs>